Hi and welcome back to Beeper Beef, the second channel for Finders Beeper's History Seekers. Now, this week, what I've decided to do is do a two-part series, one with me and one with Andy. And we're going to talk about the places that we've loved going to the most and our dream location, somewhere that we would, we've never been before, but we'd love to visit. Now, my favourite location out of every place we've been on the channel, definitely without a doubt, has to be St. Petersburg in Russia. Wow, what a place. It's quite easy to think of places like Morocco that we've been to, that's sunny and beautiful and amazing. And you might not automatically think of somewhere like Russia, but it was just one. The people were, were great. They were really, really friendly, really, really helpful. Even though we did get detained at the Russian border, uh, we got chased by the Russian army. They yeah, actually were they great, were they nice at all? I can't. Even... <laughs> but yeah, in general, we had help when we got detained at the Russian border. We had people coming and helping us out. Uh, we got speaking to people on a regular while we were there, and it was really, really nice. And the place is just fantastic. St. Petersburg is one of the prettiest cities I've ever seen. The buildings are so grand. Um, there's big things with fire coming out of them we had an experience where we saw loads and loads of people dancing in the middle of the street with the radios on the cars blaring out and you know what it was so fun it was such good fun to be part of that so for me I definitely think out of everywhere it has to be Russia and just looking back at some of the clips of the places we've been while we were there so we went to a massive gun, a huge big sort of train gun that had been used um, in the war, in the World War Two, I think it was. It might have been used as a defence for um, the Cold War. Either way, fantastic place, really, really, really good. But the thing we really wanted to talk about was our dream location, somewhere that we've not been that we really would like to go. Now... It took me quite a while. It did and it didn't. I had somewhere in my head constantly. But what I wanted to do was try and find somewhere that were, that would beat that. So there's places out there. Like My first thought, the things that you think are like Barbados, Maldives, Seychelles, all that sort of thing. A lot of people think America or Australia, actually. I don't, weirdly. I like the little quirky places that people don't generally go. But the, this one is... The, the place I ended up sort of deciding on is a bit of an emotional one for me. Um, it was somewhere that we were supposed to be going in 2020 or just before. And then, obviously, with COVID hitting, we ended up not going and it's Singapore. Now, Singapore, one of the first things you think of is the big hotel that's like a ship. Now, we were going to go and stay in that hotel, and I'm absolutely devastated that we didn't get to go. But uh, that wasn't the main pull for me. It wasn't the beach uh, on the little island. It wasn't amazing shopping areas or the zoo. Or they've got this thing, this safari thing. I don't really know what it, it's like at night time and you can see all the animals and go around with big flames on sides of cars and things like that. It looks absolutely amazing. Singapore itself looks at a fantastic place. But for me, it wasn't about that. It was for personal reasons. Now, it's somewhere that I've wanted to go on the personal side of things and somewhere that I want to go to make a video as well about it. Now... My granddad is my hero. Um, he sadly passed away a fair few years ago now in his 90s. Um, and he always taught me that you should never... Sort of... You should never... Sorry, this is really hard. <laughs> I'm finding it hard not to be really emotional about it. But you should never have an argument with somebody and leave it. And the reason he shouldn't have an argument and leave it is, or the reason he says that is, his brother, uh, who's my great uncle, Uncle George, he went after the war, because he was a little bit too young for the war. Um, so in 1951, I think it was, 
he went off um, in the RAF. He was in the RAF. Um, and he went over to Singapore. But just before that, I would got married to a German woman. Now, obviously at the time, it was quite a sensitive subject, like the German-English relationship kind of thing, because of obviously the war that was only six years previous to that. So my granddad had a bit of an argument with him because the, there'd been a bit of a tension build up in regards to the, the marriage, which you would expect back then. He loved his brother, it was his little brother, and he'd had such a close relationship with him growing up. Um, so obviously when this big argument happened and he went off and married this German uh, lady, there was that tension there and that split. Now, like I said, my granddad, had lost. he'd lost his arm in the war. Uh, he was in the army, absolute hero of a guy. I've never met anyone like him. I don't think I ever will do again. And he, he was definitely 100% my hero. But his brother, his brother, um, like I said, missed out on the Second World War and was still working within the RAF. Now, he got stationed over in Singapore just after his wedding, within two weeks of him getting married. And when he first got there, he was flying a Hornet, a plane called a Hornet and to show off to his new wife that who hadn't seen him fly before he was doing some tricks in the air over um, I think it was the east east side of Singapore and he lost control of the plane and unfortunately crashed into the road killing himself and a couple of children that were playing out on the street as well now my granddad never got to say sorry, never got to make friends with him again after the argument. And it stayed with him. It stayed with him all his life. And when I talked to him about his brother, um, it was always with love. It was always with a feeling of great pride for what he'd become how he'd grown up from being really little and he said such positive and lovely things about him and you could feel that sense of sense of loss all those years later like 50 years on from from when it happened and i made a promise to him when i was younger that i would go and i would visit his grave because the one thing, obviously back then it was a lot harder. These days we can get on a plane left, right and centre and fly off all over the world so, so easily. But back in the 50s, 60s, 70s even, um, it was a lot harder. And Singapore is a long, long way from the UK. So I made a promise to him that I would be the family sort of representative to go and see his brother and, and see his grave and see the place where he died because none of our family had ever had chance to do that and when when we were supposed to be going in 2020 i finally felt like i was going to achieve that i was going to fulfill my promise to him and just not just for him but for my great uncle and for my family and i just feel like Covid took that away, and I know a lot of pe a lot of people have had a hell of a lot more taken away from from Covid, like family members themselves and things like that. But it was just a massive thing for me, and I really need to go. I need to go and see that place, and I need to experience it. And I'm obviously emotional now, and what I'd be like when I get there, I have no idea, but. I just want to sort of include, I will, if I do ever get to go, I, I will make a video of my journey there and tell you a bit more of the story. But a couple of years ago, I found a post on the internet. Um, I'm so sorry. I found a post on the internet. Um, weirdly, I'd been doing some ancestry stuff, trying to research his life. Um, and it had popped up where exactly his grave was. They'd moved him, and it was a story all about the the crash itself and um, 
I reached out to the guy that had written it. It was like on Blogspot, which is something that I don't think even exists anymore. And he'd written all about him and I reached out and somebody else had reached out to him who was the grandfather of one of the children that had died as well. And it was just, it was heartbreaking, but it was it was like I'd finally found that almost final piece of the jigsaw to find out where he was. Because that was a thing, he'd been moved and none of us knew where he'd been moved to. So I've got photographs of the grave, I've got photographs of the crash when it actually happened, uh, the articles from the newspaper. I think the final thing for me is visiting that spot. And like I said, I could pick for my, this has been, I know it's been a bit of a morbid one, like a bit of an upsetting one, but for me that's, family is everything family is everything and if I get the opportunity to sort of fulfill that on behalf of my family that would be that would be me complete I I wouldn't need to travel to the Maldives or the Seychelles I still want to but for me that is that is my journey and that's where I want to go anyway I know that wasn't quite as you expected it to be but I'm hoping it just gives you an insight into where why I want to go there. I don't know why I've got a box of Yorkshire tea here. I thought it'd be a good idea at the time. I was like, right, let's try and reach out to Yorkshire tea, see if I can get them to sponsor us. But but now I think it's a bit of a weird thing to have after what I've just been talking about. But anyway, yeah. If I get to go, I'll do you a big story of his life and and the journey of, of getting there. Um, and fingers crossed, one day I will. The problem is it's like almost 600 pounds return flights so if me and andy went there it's over over a grand so that's that's one of the other things that's held us back but anyway let me know in the comments below is there anywhere that really means something to you that you've never been or is there somewhere that you just want to go and, and tell me why and next time it'll be andy uh, giving you why he wants to go somewhere and what the reason is behind that and hopefully his will be a little bit cheerier than mine. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.